welcome to the live streaming today um, Sunday the 14th of February uh, I hope and pray that you've had a glorious Sunday uh, by participating in the liturgy whether in person or on the internet and um, <clears throat> we wish warm thoughts and wishes to the states who are uh, freezing um, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, Tennessee, Mississippi possibly and then it's going to go the jet stream is going to take it all the way up to the northeast uh, we wish you warm um, couple of days uh, stay home if businesses are closed if schools are closed um, we did see a major accident in Fort, Fort Worth Texas there was uh, over 130 vehicles that collided and six people passed away and 12 people uh, injured so please be careful driving and leaving your home or leaving your work etc leaving school the epistle is the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians uh, chapter 6 verses 16 through chapter 7 verse 1 and the gospel according to St. Matthew and this is the last gospel reading uh, the last Sunday before the Triodion which starts next Sunday we'll talk about that a little bit more so let's start with the gospel reading um, it's uh, according to St. Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 through 28 at that time Jesus went to the district of Tyre and Sidon which is modern day Lebanon and behold a Canaanite woman from that region came out and cried have mercy on me O Lord son of David my daughter is severely possessed by a demon but he did not answer her a word and his disciples came and begged him saying send her away for she is crying after us he answered I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel we talked about that a little bit last week as well uh, but she came and knelt before him saying Lord help me and he answered it is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs she said yes Lord yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table then Jesus answered her O woman great is your faith be it done to you or be it done for you as you desire and her daughter was healed instantly okay it sounds like it's a benign gospel reading in our days here in America but actually in the Middle East especially back then to call someone a dog that's fighting words back then and up until 40 years ago when I left the Middle East to call someone a dog those are fighting words Jesus told her it is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs so he called her the Canaanite woman a dog that's a big insult over there over here in the US we cherish dogs and we love dogs and um, in many instances we elevate them to the level of our children uh, in domestically in our homes so it doesn't sound like it's an insult but over there it was a big insult so what how did she reply instead of getting insulted and yelling and screaming she said yes Lord yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table so she humbled herself to the level of a dog that's pretty low over there especially at that time back then nobody had dogs at home P 
people barely were able to feed themselves and dogs were stray dogs on the streets and everybody looked down at them and they even killed them on the street because they compete with the uh, uh, food chain. So he called her a dog and she humbled herself all the way down to the dog level in those days. Um, to go back to the beginning of that gospel reading, um, she came to him, the Canaanite woman, as you may know already, back then there was two types of people the Jews and the Gentiles. Uh, the Gentiles and the Canaanite woman was not a Jew, so she was a Gentile. She came begging him, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely possessed by a demon. And he answered, her, his disciples told him, send her away, she's crying after us. He answered, he said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So she is not my concern, he's saying. She is not a sheep of the house of Israel. So she is not my concern. And then she said to him, Lord, help me. And that's when he said to her, I'm not going to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And that's when she humbled herself and accepted the level of a dog just so that Jesus would heal her daughter. So she was a very uh, humble person. She sacrificed her dignity and lowered herself to be at the level of a dog in the Middle East in order for Jesus to heal her daughter. So was Jesus trying to insult her because she was not a Jew? Was he? As you know, Jesus was a Jew. Was he trying to insult her? Well, absolutely not. That was not his goal. His goal was to show her faith, to show even off her faith. She had a great faith. She had humility that most of us don't have today. Most of us don't have today. And she showed that humility. She showed that faith to everybody who was there, especially to the disciples. Because they told Jesus to kick her out, get rid of her. She's crying after us. And he really taught them a big lesson by healing her daughter. Even after he humiliated her in front of them. So he wanted to show off her faith and her humility. And that's exactly what happened. So it's a very interesting gospel reading today. And this is the last one before the Triodian. Next Sunday we start the Triodian. And we start with the gospel of the publican and the Pharisee. And after that, the prodigal son, judgment day Sunday, and then forgiveness Sunday. So Great Lent is around the corner. Uh, the church is nudging us again to focus our mind and our heart, and even a little bit later, our stomachs so that we focus on Christ himself and not on the cares of the world and not on everything that is around us. So I pray and hope that all of us will heed this gentle warning by the church and we start focusing on Christ himself and not on um, everything that's going on around us. Uh, let's go back to the epistle uh, the last statement of the epistle, which is uh, chapter 7, verse 1, he says, Since we have these promises that God earlier said, God will come and dwell among us and walk among us and help us and um, 
we should clean, cleanse ourselves because God is around us. So he said, since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit and make holiness perfect in the fear of God. So St. Paul is calling us to cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit. How does that happen? Well, we need to get rid of things in our lives. We need to leave certain things back away from us. Leave them out of our lives as we adopt the virtues. We can't have the sins and the virtues existing at the same time in our lives. We have to start getting rid of these sins and vices and at the same time start adopting the um, uh, virtues like the virtue of humility being humble as the Canaanite woman in the gospel reading today showed us we can't be arrogant and humble at the same time so we have to get rid of arrogance and acquire humility the same thing goes for all the other virtues. The sins and vices are going to decrease and the virtues are going to increase. That's the hope. And we start talking about that starting next Sunday with the publican and the Pharisee uh, gospel reading. If you have any questions, please type them up as I update you on the winter, ca winter camp that happened this past weekend. It started on Friday and uh, continued on uh, Saturday, yesterday. Uh, it's called WAMP. The teens don't like to say winter camp, but they call it WAMP. They combine winter and camp and they call it WAMP. Um, this year, since it is online and it is not at the camp itself in Asbury Hill in South Carolina, we called it WAMP out, which is an experience of, of winter camp outside of camp. And because it was outside of camp, and because children did not have to adjust to the new venue, the new location, we dropped the age we accepted to 9, 9 through 11. Normally we start at 12, but we accepted 9 through 11. Um, because there is no need to adjust to the new venue and uh, they will not miss their parents um, and there was a lot of them who participated it was wonderful um, we had several sessions one of the sessions was for every child to write a psalm expressing their feelings especially in the midst of this um, pandemic. And then we had an Ask Sayyidna session. Um, on Friday, we had different sessions, uh, icebreakers and uh, uh, a new game uh, called Kahoot. And um, it, it was wonderful. It was wonderful to see all the children asking questions and participating in uh, the retreat. The next um, events that we should be looking forward to is the Antiochian men retreat the Antiochian women retreat they're two different weekends uh, we will announce them next weekend uh, next Sunday and the um, teen cyber spring retreat all of these retreats will be during Great Lent uh, for all um, uh, organizations Antiochian men, Antiochian women, and uh, the teens. Okay, let's see if there are any questions. Now that some have received the second, the second shot of the coronavirus vaccine, will it allow a greater number of parishioners to attend Divine Liturgy soon? God willing, yes, God willing. We will have to wait for uh, directives from the Metropolitan. 
uh, God willing, uh, that's what will happen. Right now, we're still at a maximum of 33%, and uh, uh, soon, God willing, soon, there will be more uh, directives from the Metropolitan um, talking about that. I checked uh, this morning, or was it yesterday uh, evening, um, that there was about 50 million Americans who have been vaccinated now, uh, who have received the first dose, 50 million. We'll see how it progresses. First, you must acquire virtues to choke out non-virtues then. No, that's not true. We have to work on getting rid of the non-virtues, the sins and the vices first. We have to work on getting rid of them, and at the same time, simultaneously, we work on acquiring the virtues. We can't acquire the virtues. It is impossible to get the virtues while we keep the sins. So both processes have to take place at the same time. We work on getting rid of, of on getting rid of a certain sin as we work hard on acquiring one of the virtues, the opposite of that sin. I recommend to work first on self-control because having more self-control helps us uh, acquire the other virtues in an easier way. Self-control is a foundational virtue that helps with all the other virtues. Without self-control, we really can't do anything. So we need to work on increasing our self-control by fasting, by prayer, by any action that disciplines us, disciplines ourselves, and that's how we can increase our um, uh, self-control. What is the church's position on the COVID vaccine, vaccines in general? Um, well, there is no official position of the church with a capital C, the Orthodox Church, because there hasn't been an ecumenical council since um, 787. So there isn't an official stand by the Orthodox Church in general regarding vaccines. Um, but there are stands by different patriarchates. And uh, um, there was um, a uh, directive or an encyclical by our patriarchate a couple of days ago, a week ago, or something like that. And the directive says that this is left to the person and his or her doctor. Uh, that's what the encyclical by our patriarchate says. Um, I hope that answers your question, uh, Tom. Or Todd, or let me see, who was it? Ted. Um, so our patriarchate says it's up to the person and his or her doctor with respect to the uh, vaccine. Any other question? There is a letter by the Metropolitan on the Archdiocese website, Antiochian.org, regarding vaccines and other issues. Uh, you can go and read it. It is on the uh, Antiochian.org, and it talks about vaccines, among other things. It's a, it's a uh, discussion at length. It's about five pages. You're welcome, Anna Sarah. My pleasure. The number one goal of these meetings is to get together in fellowship and feel that we support each other. Uh, we talk a little bit about the gospel, about the epistle. Uh, we don't go too much in details uh, or deeply um, because this is not 
what we are intending out of this. The most important thing is that we get together and support each other, but at the same time we talk about the gospel and the epistle. Um, at, we talk about a few points um, of the epistle and the gospel. God bless you all. God willing, we'll see you next week at the beginning of the Triodion. And uh, officially, after that, after, including that Sunday, and five sun, uh, four Sundays, um, we'll, after four Sundays, starting next week, Great Lent starts. Um, I am sure Father John, the Metropolitan, uh, or the Department of, uh, of uh, Liturgics will send some directions very soon. Yeah, Michael is saying, we miss seeing everyone at Domsey in person events. The Backlog family can't wait for the next time we can. God willing, I'm looking forward to that. And I've been promoting, I've been promoting the hope as we pray for an in-person fall retreat. God willing, this coming September. Let's all pray and hopefully the pandemic will be over by then and we will have an in-person um, uh, fall retreat. Al is um, showing the link to the Antiochian.org where the article is, not the article, the letter from the Metropolitan. Thank you, Christy. Amen, let us hope. Nora, how are you? God willing, for retreat. Let us hope that we will overwhelm logistically St. Ignatius Church in Franklin, Tennessee. I spoke with Father Philip. I said to him, if we have the in-person uh, fall retreat, it's going to be there at, the, at St. Ignatius Church, and let's hope to overwhelm them, take over all the hotels in the area. God willing. All right. If you have no more questions, God willing, we'll see you next week at the... Um, uh, Triodian uh, gospel reading uh, at church and then here at the live stream. Yeah, they can they can uh, have us. They have actually three buildings. I'm hoping those three buildings will not be enough. Uh, they have the current uh, new church. They have the old church, and they have a hall. Uh, let's hope they're not enough and we'll have them build a tent or something in the parking lot. God bless you all. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.